What is it about the way we are asking the question, questions like this? Could we get a low carbon future without nuclear power? And I want to address specifically two aspects of that that I think start to respond to, uh, or at least uh, provide some of my thoughts on the issues that have been coming up over the last few hours. The first one is there's a tendency to, when we're talking about energy, to really just be talking about energy commodities, fuel and electricity. Peter Drucker, the famous management guru, said, wrote years and years ago, there's actually no demand for energy for any commodity. The fundamental demand is always for some underlying service or human need or amenity. Amory Lovins famously and brilliantly applied that principle to energy in an article in Foreign Affairs magazine in 1976 when he started by saying, you know, there's no demand for fuels and electricity. Nobody wants a kilowatt hour in their hand. Nobody wants a barrel of oil in their living room. And it sounds cute and it sounds like maybe it's just a turn of phrase, but in fact, it's a paradigm shifter. Because when you really take that insight to heart and use it in the way that you think about the human energy system, it completely reorganizes the way that you see it and it completely redefines the range of possibilities for meeting human needs with less energy commodity rather than more, with more renewable forms of energy rather than less, in a way that's not possible when you define, as was the case when I 30 some years ago first entered this field, discovered the, the, the overwhelming uh, body of, of people working in energy looked at the problem was, how can we make sure we have enough fuel and electricity? Something for which we agree there's no demand. So the ripples from this actually extend very, very deep into the way that we formulate the questions about energy. 